wherever you live and wherever you are right now as you join us, just thanks. It's Friday. It's our parish feast day, the feast day of the most sacred heart. Our mission statement here says it well, really. Loved by God, we love the world. You don't have to be a member of this parish to know how important those words are and how true they are. We are indeed loved by God. And if you wonder about that, I'll tell you, you are. You really are, as you are. And for each of us, the call is to then love this world. And we have our first ever welcome retreat going on right now. If you'd be so kind as to whisper a prayer for the women participants who are brave to sign up and the team who's come from Assumption, who've been so generous, and all of our wonderful staff working behind the scenes, and for my part as well, just that God will use this time to make a difference for them. And so anyway, thanks again. May these summer days be richly blessed for you and for those you love. Family. As important as family is, it's also kind of hard sometimes. A sense of humor can help. Dr. Ira Bayak, a pioneer in hospice ministry whose work I read when I was studying bereavement, said, I have always thought the term dysfunctional family is redundant. <laughs> Poet Mary Carr put it this way, I think a dysfunctional family is any family with more than one person. <laughs> In any case, and whatever the size and shape of our own families, today we get a rare glimpse into the family of Jesus. Now we normally think of his nuclear family, right? Mary, Joseph, Jesus. But today we get a bit of a glimpse of his more extended family. Guess what? It wasn't pretty. I mean, at least in, in today's gospel. Our gospel tells us that when Jesus' relatives heard about what he was doing and the huge crowd following him, they said, and I quote, he is out of his mind. <laughs> It's going to be a particularly fun Thanksgiving dinner, huh? Anyway, so how about our families? For us, there are two basic kinds of families we each have. The first is the family we started out in, right? The who gave us birth, those with whom we grew up. Sometimes a single parent family. Sometimes a father and mother who are married, perhaps there are siblings, maybe even an intergenerational family with grandparents, aunts, uncles, all living together. First is the family we grew up with. Second, the family we choose. You know, for many that ends up being, including marriage and often kids. For some that might mean communal living, such as in a religious order or a church family. The family also consists of the friends we make through life. Those whom we love like a, a brother or a sister or a, a mom or a dad. You know, one of the gifts of the welcome retreat, like the one that we're having this weekend is, well, is that we hope each retreatant's fellow retreatants become a part of their family now. Right? Anyway, these two types of family are, of course, not mutually exclusive. I'm blessed that my siblings are also, in many ways, among, among my friends. But here's the important truth. Good families don't just happen. They are made. Good families of both types take work. How can we help make the kind of family we desire happen. There are many things. I'll suggest just five that are a part of any loving family. 
one. It seems obvious and unnecessary to say, but unless there are some, there are some extraordinary circumstances that prevent this, we'll never have a loving family without actually spending some time with them. Now, with the pace of life these days and the ubiquitous and addictive nature of our cell phones, this is sometimes hard to make happen. Two, since there is no authentic family without some tension and struggle, it's important to be able to sometimes say things like, how do we do this better next time? Or, I'm sorry, or I forgive you. And to certainly think about how we need to change our expectations. Three, each family needs the grace of God. And when we intentionally connect to God with family members, you know, talking about Jesus, talking to him, it truly deepens the bond and vitality of our family. Four, remembering that there is a bigger world beyond our family and that we're hmm, sent out to love the bigger family of the world of, of whom we are a part. And five, as I said at the beginning, it helps to keep a sense of humor and a willingness to keep perspective, to be able to sometimes laugh at ourselves. And there are more, of course. And I don't know what any of these will look like specifically in anyone's lives. So let's do this. I will invite you now to listen to the wisdom of your own heart in a moment of silent reflection. In just a moment, I'll invite you to these two things. One, to think of something you might want to imagine saying to the family you grew up in. I mean, for all their imperfections, these folks do matter. So maybe there'd be something that surfaces in you to say to them, you know, to family members living or dead or both. Maybe there'd be something that they would want to say to you. And two, to think gratefully for a moment about the family you choose. Friends, spouses, church family, etc. What might you pray for them? And might God have something to say to you about them? The way we'll do this is to use a bit of imagination with eyes open or closed, whichever you prefer, to see what God might have for you. I'll lead you through it. Now, I know that some might more naturally use imagination than others. I mean, I'm sure that's true. But still, I invite you to give it a try. So, please first take a few deep breaths. And as you breathe in and out, become aware of having a body, of being alive, of being you. First, see the faces of family members from your growing up years. You know, mom, dad, brothers or sisters. See them, right? You know, some of these people are still with you. Some of them live now in the prayerful memories of your heart. Picture some of those who lived in your home as you grew up. And just take them in for a moment. Now, if you could say one thing to any of them, or to all of them, what might you say? what surfaces in you. And maybe even say those words in your own head now. Maybe there's something they want to say to you, perhaps even in response. 
what might they say? Let yourself hear that. Secondly, now see those in the family you choose. Again, imperfect people, but important. Whomever this might be, right? Spouses, kids, community members, friends. You know, to whom would you turn if you were scared? If you had good news, who would you call? Is there a prayer in your heart for any or, or even all of these folks now? What might you pray for them? And now could you imagine that God might want to say something to you about them? And so, what might that be? What might God say to you at this time in your life about these folks? Now, if you closed your eyes, I invite you to open them again and become aware of being alive here and now in this place. I know that some use imagination more readily than others. If there was any blessing and that I'm glad, if you could use a little more time, you could revisit this later. If it was difficult for you or you fell asleep, it's okay. It's still true. The work of family is both a gift and an ongoing effort. Family was important to Jesus and sometimes tough. Jesus understands that family is also important to us and sometimes tough. And Jesus cares about our families. Today we ask God to help us. That we, we might be given the grace we need to be grateful for our families and to love them well. <laughs>